Next, I want to talk to you about the VCA. The VCA in a format of synthesizer like this is often overlooked. Let's face it, all we do is apply the envelope to it and we're done. Uh, there are other things we can do with the VCA, certainly. Uh, different modulations we can add to it. But there is one thing that I think is particularly useful that never really happens largely because of the architecture of a lot of synthesizers like this. And I'd like to see it happen more because I stumbled across it with an ARP 2600. The ARP 2600 allows you to direct more than one envelope to your VCA. And when you do that, you get a combination of those different envelopes, you get different accents, different emphases. It's really a cool effect that I don't see used enough in just the standard format of analog synthesizer. So I wanna give you a, a tiny demonstration of what that's like. Okay, so let's dive in here. I have, I think, three sawtooth waves. <laughs> Uh, pretty straightforward sound. Let's adjust the envelope, the amp envelope. Now, in a lot of synthesizers, we're done. There's not much more we can do. That is what controls the envelope. And uh, you don't usually have the opportunity in a normal keyboard synth to, first of all, have a multitude of envelopes that you can direct anywhere else but uh, definitely have an envelope situation that you can set up to direct elsewhere. So let's immediately start directing another envelope to our amp. Okay, I'm gonna go to envelope three and I'm gonna go over here to the VCA. Okay, let's set it to something that is not like our current envelope. <laughs> Now, what would happen if we added a nice attack to that thing that currently doesn't have an attack? Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna turn this up. If you turn it all the way up, the modulating envelope takes charge. But if you back it off, you'll be able to hear both envelopes doing their thing to the sound. So in this instance, you have now a complex envelope. It's more than ADSR. It's AD ADSR because of the way that we have spaced the envelope three with the slow attack of envelope two. And it allows us a much more complicated sound. And don't forget, we have a delay on envelope three, so we can make that pluck happen anywhere we want. That gets a little bit weird, but <laughs> anyway, the point of the matter is we have just mixed two different types of envelopes. And you get to balance where you, how much of that second envelope affecting the VCA uh, occurs using the amount, the mod amount in the matrix. But let's also remember, hey, we, we could put even more. We could put another envelope in there. Let's take, uh, for example, LFO1 and make it into an envelope. Now we have three different sort of plucky things happening. We have the initial clunk from envelope three, and then we have a little surge from LFO one, and then we have the rest of the envelope from envelope two. And it gets kind of tricky trying to balance all these.
but it's certainly possible. So now we have a super complex envelope. We have the attack and decay generated by this triangle wave in LFO1, which we can't adjust. We can make it more like what's happening with envelope three, or we can make it more like its own shape. You can distinctly hear three different envelopes affecting the amplitude of that sound. And we can do that not only with the VCA, but we can also direct those to the filter. You could make a complex filter envelope by directing multiple envelopes to the filter in that exact same way. So don't settle for a single simple envelope, a simple ADSR or a simple AD envelope. You can mash up your envelopes and create more complex variations over time uh, for any destination that you are sending the envelope to. For example, why not uh, sync? have a really uh, sync sound that varies over time due to multiple envelopes. Anyway, it's a really helpful tool for making more complex envelope outcomes.